Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Marcus. I'm uh, Ryan. And together, we, we are, are the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Back at you with a new video. It's Final Four season. College basketball at its very best. We are going to go over the best plays in the Elite Eight. A preview and predictions for the Final Four and the championship game. Uh, crazy, crazy season in college basketball this year. Yes, man. You know, March Madness is my... Second favorite time of the year next next to the Super Bowl. Well, sporting event time of the year next to the Super Bowl. How y'all think this, this March Man has been? Y'all should comment below. Let, let me know on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you rank the 2019 March Madness tournament? The most unpredictable tournament yes. that I can remember in years. Yes. All the powerhouse teams, Duke and the North Carolinas Kentucky. and the Michigans and the Kentuckys, all those teams that we thought, I thought, yep. that were going to make it deeper at least to the four. Fell short, but that kind of gives a little magic in the air that maybe one of these underdogs, Some you got new blood. Right, Texas Tech and Auburn, never been to the Final Four, right? Virginia, I believe it was 1984, and Michigan State's got the most experience, right. maybe with no big-time NBA names. Name on that roster for right. the first time in a while. Right, so it's going to be kind of one of those things, who will play the best defense, yep. who will rebound the best, and ultimately, who has got the best coaching out of those teams to bring home the title. All right, so before we get into these highlights, subscribe to our channel. Hit the thumbs up for your boy. And let's get into the best plays of the Elite Eight, March Madness highlights. See how your team got to the Final Four, Auburn, Virginia, Texas Tech, Michigan State. Let's get it. Hey, where we get this highlight package from? We got it from House of Highlights. Go sub to his channel, man. His packages is always lit. Absolutely. All right, let's check them out. Let's get it, man. I missed everybody. I know, huh? It's been a while. I miss y'all, man. Oh! Ho, 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 That's how you start the package off? Oh, my goodness. So I know I know you had the kids. Yeah, I had kids. And you had a busy schedule. I was pretty busy, too. I caught a good chunk of the games. Right. But I don't think you saw someone lose their legs. Lose their Nikes. What happened there? Hey, that that almost was reconstructive knee surgery. Right. ACL, MCL. His knee almost popped out of socket. PCL. Let's see. Man, his, his leg is awkward. <laughs> oh! Wow. Hey, that was nasty. Oh, he gonna slow mo it? Wow. Don't slow mo it. Skirt. Skirt. Man. A thirty two. We gonna have to give you an MRI, my right. guy. Someone call nine one one. Ooh. Oh, nice move. Oh, from deep. Woo. Hey, that's far enough. What a hand up, too. Man, he's up joining the party, the splash party from three, from deep. They had a great season. Okay, Purdue. Yeah, they had, they did have a good year. Oh, this is my guy right here, number Carson three. Carson Edwards. Hey, that's far enough. Edwards. Trace for days. Man, he's shooting threes like Dame Dollar from the logo. Man, he shot that one from deep. Some Steph Curry. Cooking it up. James Harden. Yeah, he had a great turning run. Yes. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Woo! Send that thing to overtime. I said that as far as tying the game or buzzer beater, that might have been the play of the tourney. Was that the best play of the that tourney? That might have been the play of the tourney. What y'all think? That's the play of the tourney? I mean, as far as drama... I mean, Virginia was one of the favorite teams to go very far. They said, not like y'all, they ain't going to do us like last year. Ooh. Ooh. Don't split them, no. Woo. Hello. I know you didn't see that play over the weekend. Hey. Woo. See, me and Old Dog just had a conversation about this guy, Mr. Ty Jerome. Yeah. What? What round, what do you think you, this guy's going to get picked in the NBA draft? I say maybe early second, late first. I'm thinking early to mid second. And a lot of second round guys don't make the roster. Right. But if you have heart, right, and you play hard and you get on the right fit, the right scheme, yep. the right team, yep. there's always a chance that you can make that roster. You know who his game remind me of? Who? Uh, 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 old University of Maryland player, Grievous Vasquez. Oh, okay. Kind of point guard, 60s point guard, right. not super athletic. He's crazy. Kind of, kind of slimy, like in yeah. between the lane, you know what I mean? He can shoot better than Grievous can, though. Yeah. 
That's a good comparison. Yeah, I got okay. I got to run that back. Let me run that back. Let me see that move, man. That, yeah. that was kidding. Very pretty elusive nice in, in in the hole, you know what I mean? Oh, get through. Oh, just throw it up then. Uh, little floater. Float it. Woo Over the big man. Big man like 7-4, right? Yeah. 32. Oh, wow. Oh, I was about to say, he ooped that from deep. Yeah. Oh, go. Oh, nice passing. Oh, give it back. Woo! Oh! Let's go. Charles Barkley got out of his seat for that one. He said, no, no, no. Oh, why he look at him like that afterwards? Give me that. He said, the round, round, round of rebound. Give me that. Okay, Barkley's loving that. Ooh! Oh! Why he cock that thing back? Wow. Why he cock it? Oh! Why he cock it like that? <laughs> It's funny, too, because, I mean, I, I ultimately thought Duke was going to win the championship this season. Yeah, me too. You know what I, I mean? I well, you got lie. three, you got th minimum of three NBA players. Three top five picks. Right. In this upcoming draft and then on the bench and the rest of the guys, you may and, have another Trey one. Trey Jones ain't no slouch either. Right. He, he could go first round. But between Reddish, right, Barrett, Zion, how do you lose? Yeah. And Coach K coaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the big thing that ultimately lost them, right, a big run, to go deep in the tourney is what? The lack of three-point shooting and defense. Right. The three-point shooting was horrible. Yeah, they, they ain't got no three-point shooters. They had maybe one three-point shooter. Who is, their, who is their best shooter all season? Cam Reddish. Reddish, and he wasn't even really that great yeah. from the outside. It's the first time a Duke team didn't really have a shooter. You know what I mean? They have a J.J. Reddick or, they didn't or, or have somebody one. like that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it. You know? And you get an aggressive team that comes right at you, not afraid of you. They got a good coach themselves, right? Izzo? Got a great coach. Any, Hall any, of Fame coach. Right. Anything is possible. Let me see my man cock that thing back again, though. No fear. No fear. Woo! Woo! I can watch that all day. Yeah, I love it. Ooh, a little crossover. Oh, watch out. Ooh. He's just too, he's too powerful. Now you see me, now you don't. Look. With the finish. Oh, that could have been an and one. Look, right yeah. there. He's all on him. Look yeah. how he just go through contact like that, man. Yep. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Ooh, nice pump fake. Don't do him again. Woo! Woo! Hey! Woo who is this? MJ reincarnated? Hey! Wow. Is that the same Bama who caught who cocked it back? It looked like it. Hey, I got my eye on you, cuz. Wow. What a great play though. I got my eye on him. Look at that! But you could tell in the first half, they were not afraid. The Spartans were not afraid of Duke. That's old Sparty, man. They got Izzo, man. Izzo ain't having that. Great defense, great rebounding, good vision. Oh. Woo! Another and one with the facial. Man. Duke is like, this is not happening. Woo! Oh. With the finish. Look at the pass. Nice pass. Right in the lane. One, two. Yep. Magic loves okay, it. Okay, Magic. He said, oh. Wow. Man. That's a nice little highlight package. Yeah, that, that I almost is. wanted more. I was like, is that it? I is, know. Is it I, I, I'm waiting for more to come on, but that, that was a great highlight package, man. Salute the house of highlights, man. Make sure y'all sub to the channel. Right. So let's go over some, uh, you know, matchups, times, right. networks to kind of get you ready. So final four, number five, Auburn versus number one, Virginia. Virginia is a heavy favorite in the game. Yes. Um, you know, obviously they haven't been there since 84. It's been a long time, but they have been in the top five pretty much all season. Right. They've been one of the powerhouse teams. Auburn kind of came out of nowhere. You know, Charles Charles Barkley, you know, he's he's rooting. He's uh, hoping some magic can happen. He's an alma mater. Right. 309 Saturday, CBS. That'll be the first game. Um, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be tough. I mean, Ty Jerome, to me, is right. going to dictate the tempo for Virginia. Yep. So if he dictates the tempo and they play like they normally do, hard defense, rebounding, boxing out, doing all the intangibles, they should be able to find a way. But the thing about Auburn that's sneaky, right, is they got guys that are long, lengthy. They got that length and athleticism. You know, it, it almost reminds me of like their football team. It's like, you know, with their football team, there's some similarities with this basketball team. Sometimes you take them for granted. Right. There's other teams in the division, Alabama, and other powerhouse teams that you might think Other are, than the SEC. Right, in the SEC that are better. But when it comes up to that matchup, when they end up going head-to-head, man-for-man, they usually hold their own. 
right there with They're him. right there with them. So Bryce Brown and Jared Harper, those are the guys to look out for on Auburn. If they're going to find a way to win this game, for me, they're going to have to get to an early lead, right? And they're going to have to be up at halftime. Right. Virginia is a team that can come back in the second half. But if you end up giving them a, what, maybe eight, nine point lead at half, that might be enough if they can keep it up in the second half. But if it ends up being one of those games where it's like tied at half or Virginia's up by four, at that point I think it'll be over because Virginia knows how to dictate the tempo. But you never know, Bruce Pearl. That's what I was about to that say. That might be man. the X factor, right, for for them to be able to get the victory for Auburn. This, this, this Auburn team, I haven't, I ain't gonna lie, I haven't watched a lot of them this year. Just pretty much. From well, I don't the think high, anyone's from really the highlights the whole lot in the tournament. Yeah. And the first thing that I, I noticed is they 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 got the personality of their head coach. Yes. They're, they're, they're feisty. They're they're scrappy. They won't give up, and and if you meet them in the back alley, <laughs> you don't have to fight all fifteen of them. So I I, I definitely expecting a a, a low scoring uh, defensive game with Virginia. They they've been what the last what three years they they've been the top five program. Right. They've been on the rise in the in the country. Yeah, you know if, if it wasn't for last year with the upset of mm -hmm. them going out early, they probably be looking at back to back uh, right. Final Four. So it's a a, a lot of urgency. Uh, for this Virginia squad, man, to, to, to cut down the nets. Right. And for them to be successful, we all know about Ty Jerome. We all about, know about uh, Mr. I believe his name's DeAndre Hunter. Uh, my key for them winning is uh, Dia Comite, mm -hmm. the, the big man. When he's controlling the boards and he's blocking shots and he's getting out and running the floor, they're a different team. Right. And when Auburn played, I believe, what, Kentucky? Yeah, they right? played Kentucky. Right. You notice how they closed out. You notice how the defense was – they were just everywhere. Right. You know what I mean? The help side defense was great. So if they can keep this game in, like, the 50s, mm -hmm. it's going to benefit Auburn. And I think they'll have a better chance to win. But if this game gets into, like, the high 60s, 70s, right. Virginia might run away with it. You know what I, I mean? Even though the seems... games have been close for them to get there, um, anything can happen. And I don't know if both underdogs are going to find a way in this championship or both heavy favored teams, you know, that are going to maybe it'll be one and one. Right. But as far as a prediction, do you got one? Uh, I'm going with Virginia, man. They're, they're to me, they're the. Uh, it's kind of destiny for for them, man. To, to what I see for for what they went through last year and all of the the, the grief and the crap, and they had to fight this whole year uh, with knowing what happened last year, and then that first game in the tournament probably was so hard for them to get through. Right. They made it through. They fought through that adversity, and uh, I'm looking for them to cut down the nets. Right. And you don't want them to be like a Gonzaga. Right. Not to you know. You know, shed any bad light on Gonzaga, right. but it's like one of those teams that's always good, but then finds a way just to fall a little short. Just can't get it over that hump, right? But think about this: out of all the teams, North Carolina, Kentucky, Duke, Michigan, right? Virginia is the best team left right. out of all the powerhouse teams. So in essence, they should win the championship because yeah, they facts. have the the best team, yep. right? But if other teams end up having a good scheme, this is like a one game tourney. You know, one game to get to the championship, one game to win the championship. So I got Virginia winning this one. I got them going to the championship game. But, like I said, if Auburn can make it a low-scoring game in the 50s, yep. anything is possible. And let's go to the next game, number three, Texas Tech okay. versus number two, Michigan State. This is the game of the weekend. I think this game will have a little bit more excitement, a little bit more flair, uh, a little bit more star power. Yep. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that if either team wins – Nobody in the country will be surprised. Saturday, 549 CBS, directly right after Auburn and Virginia. The, the, to me, the, it's, it's just kind of two similar teams it, it's, it's, as far as their, their playing style. But this game right here, is it, it, what, whichever star player gets it in the most is, is going to be the winner of this game. And when I say star player for Texas Tech, we're talking about who? Jarrett Culver. Hey, definitely going to be a top 10 pick in this upcoming draft. And for Michigan State, we got the grimy, the yep. gritty, the yep. vet. Right. He seemed like he'd been there for six years. Right. Was it well, who that is? Cassius Winston. Hey, man, it, it, this dude doesn't do anything great or elite. All he does is find a way to, to get it done, and I believe he's averaging probably like 25 points per game in his tournament. It, it, he gets it done, man. He's a winner. So it, that's definitely going to be a battle. Uh, my prediction for that, oh, that, that's tough, man. That's tough. Cause I love Sparty, man. I, I I love his his mental. He always has his team prepared and, and ready for a fight. But I, I want to see some new blood. I'm going with Mr. Jared Culver, man. Right. Texas Tech for the win. So 
I mean, it's easy to be like, oh, Virginia, Michigan State, if you're going based off, like, you know, talent, experience, how the teams have right. played. But, I mean, this tourney has been kind of like the underdog. Anything Like, but anything that. can happen. A yep. lot of these, like, surprise teams are getting a lot deeper. Jarrett Culver, probably the best player left in the oh, tourney. Oh, that's big facts. Is that big facts, yeah, that's right? Big, that's big facts. Right. Last four games in the tourney, 29, 22, 19, and 16. Okay. Right. Obviously, Carson Edwards had a nice little run, right. but they didn't end up you know, advancing. Uh, Michigan State, Cassius Winston, Big Ten Player of the Year. Yes. you got to keep an eye on him. If Michigan State's going to win, he has to have an incredible game. Solid. 20 points, 10 assists, 4 steals versus Duke. Okay. You usually don't get that stat line when you're going against guys like R.J. Barrett, Zion. Zion. You know, you got Trey Jones, one of the best defensive point guards in the nation. So. Right. But I got an X factor. All who, right. Who that is? Texas Tech, Matt Mooney, a transfer, 17 points, 5 assists from Gonzaga. I believe if he has a great game, 14 points or more, Added on to what Jarrett Culver is going to give you, which right. I believe will be 15 or more. That might be enough, you know what I mean, to pull up the upset. I do like Michigan State. I like the defense. Right. I like Izzo. I like what they – I love Izzo. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to go against Michigan State, you know, just because what they stand for. Yeah. But I do like Jarrett Culver being the best player left. Right. You know what I mean? So I can't pick two of the – favorite teams or two of the underdogs maybe one and one, one, and one. so i'm gonna go texas tech too and i'm having i'm gonna go Jarrett culver with a big game 20 plus points they're gonna find a way and then it's gonna be texas tech versus virginia in the championship game and i believe that would be this monday yeah so crazy all right so make sure y'all comment below man i want to hear y'all thoughts yeah man. let us know let me know what on a scale of one to ten where would you rank this 2019 ncaa march madness tournament man Dude, literally, though, like if you think about the last like 10 or 15 years, this might be the most unpredictable tourney yeah, it, in the it's, last it's 15 been crazy. years. crazy. Because did anyone in their right minds think Auburn would Especially literally – Auburn going to get this far out of the SEC, really? Right. That that was the SEC team that was going to make it? Or Texas Tech from the Big 12? Right. That was the team? Not Tennessee, right. not, not Kentucky from the SEC, but Auburn. Right. If Michigan State and Virginia, I mean, that could be a little bit more – like okay, expected. I, 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 I yeah, can see okay, that, especially can, yeah, Virginia. Yeah, right, but not, not as much maybe Michigan State, but Auburn, Texas Tech. Yeah, this, this, first this, time ever, that's, ever in the school's history. Salute to them two teams, but this this Michigan State team is is different. Like I said, we normally have some type of star power. Mateen Cleaves, yeah, Mateen Cleaves, some type of Draymond, Green, Mo P, Mo P, some type of star right. power, and they just got Cassius Winston. Don't get me wrong, he's a right. solid player. He's a, a, a all American, big facts. Right, but he, he just doesn't. Izzo might make us uh, reap our words and eat our words. I, I, gotta, you know I, I got I got a mean? feeling of that, man. You know what I mean? Being the experienced team that has the most experience in the Final Four, yep. the coach that has the most experience, and usually what we say: if you have a great coach, that feeds off to your players. Yep. So we'll have to wait and see if we're right or wrong. All right. On the so we'll be back at y'all real soon. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hit the thumbs up for your boy, and we'll be back at you shortly with another video. All right, I'm Marcus. This is my guy, Ryan. Only got one question for you. Who you know talks sports like us? Northwest Sports Fanatics, man. Yeah. Crazy Final Four. I'm excited, man. Let's go, Culver. <laughs> Let's go right into the Wizards uniform. <laughs>